方啊。嗯嗯。Okay. Okay. So, cooking and other aspects of household management. Usually, ito ang ang focus talaga ng home economics eh. Talagang pambahay lang. Miriam Webster, a subject or class that teaches skills such as cooking or sewing, which are useful in the home. For, according to Cambridge at school, the study of cooking, sewing, and subjects related to the management of a home. But technically, now, iba na ang sakop ng home economics. It's not just for um, literally home, but beyond the home, including the community, ang sakop ng home economics. So, pwedeng itong mga um, skills na matutunan natin sa home economics, we can extend it to the community. We can use it to teach them. We can use it for business purposes and other things. Okay. Next slide. So, before we proceed to uh, the, the topics under home economics, let's discuss its history first. So, I think the discuss na rin to previously, um, you know already what happened in the past, especially in education. But this history, it's about the education here in the Philippines. So, Medyo maraming text, but I'm going to highlight what are the important things that we need to know. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry. So, the economic situation during the pre-colonial times uh, was the great contributor and a major factor in the system of education in the Philippines. So, before the Spanish colonization, meron ng uh, education sa Philippines. So kahit uh, ano to parang primitive pa ang mga Pinoy noon, meron na tayong system or educational system. And it was just plain and simple. So the medium of instruction used was alibata or the native alphabet. And during those times, again, ang mga teachers ay tinatawag na babaylan and katalonan. So they are gifted with wisdom and knowledge on spirituality and the system of running their own society. During those times, ang tinuturo, ang mas binibigyan pansin ay ang kultura in terms of religion, yun ang uh, pinapahalagahan doon. So, wala pang mga scientific um, topics that time. And again, it's more of being religious, um, worshiping this God, and so on. Then, Education was truly valued by the early Filipinos. The fathers trained their sons on how to hunt and other means of maintaining a livelihood. So, medyo nakikita na natin yung side dito ng TLE. Kasi so this, this was the, the uh, purpose of TLE. Ito mga subjects na tinuturo. Agriculture, um, farming, and for the mothers... They are in charge of teaching their girls and instructing on household chores. So, yan na pumapasok si home economics. Dati pa lang, though, we don't have a specific term. But, um, sorry, nahulog tissue ko. <laughs> but, uh, home economics or how to manage home is being taught. So, not in a formal way, but it is mandated by the uh, parents. Kumbaga, responsibility ng parents na kailangan ang mga anak nila ay matuto ng ganitong skill kasi there will come a time na sila ay mag-aasawa 
bubuo ng sariling pamilya at kailangan ready sila sa ganong responsibility din. Okay? Uh, wait, please. Okay. Anyway, so to continue, um, both Filipino men and women knew how to read and write using their own alphabet called Alibata. It was composed of 17 symbols representing the letters of the alphabet. So it contains uh, three vowels and the rest were consonants. Okay, sorry, wait lang ha. Okay, so to continue, um, you know, communities were Muslim like those on Mindanao and education was pro proliferated through the religion of Islam. So, siyempre sila, iba yung culture nila. Um, though, in the past, we still don't have Christianity since this is before the Spaniards. So, it's very different. And the Muslims have um, what we call the, the Quran. And this is what they are following. So, to sum up, informal and unstructured are the words best used to describe the education in the Philippines during the pre-Spanish era. So the type of education was not institutionalized and separate institutions for education were not in place. So walang specialization, walang formal, walang structured or standardized um, syllabus or curriculum na sinusundan. Okay, so questions? O gising pa ba? <laughs> I know, eh, siesta ngayon, eh. So, I hope everyone is still listening. Yes, po. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So, um, now we enter the uh, Spanish period. So, compared with the system of the early settlers, this time, naging formal na. Since definitely Spanish in, in the past, they are more advanced than the Filipinos. So they introduced Christian school, which were mandated by Augustinians. Then um, they also established primarily, primary to tertiary level. And... Uh, schools for boys and girls were separate. Why do you think they are separate? Uh, any idea? Why do you think kailangan pang paghiwalayan ang boys and girls sa, uh, sa school? Ma'am, di ba po kasi dati sobra pong ano, yung parang yung boys po is sobrang superior po, tapos yung babae po is nasa bahay lang po lagi. So parang when it comes to education siguro may pagkakaiba din po yung dalawa. Okay, correct. Thank you for that. So nagkaroon ng, uh, well, still in the past, medyo discriminated I, 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 for me, discriminate is, is my term. But for others, um, it's, it's what society says. Na ang babae ay dapat nasa bahay or matutunan ang mga ganitong bagay lang. Pero ang lalaki dapat ganito ang matutunan. So, uh, definitely, girls can go to school. But in a certain level lang. Tapos, puro um, basic na uh, discussion, na, na skills lang yung binibigay na pambahay. So, siguro basic alphabet, tapos mga um, home economics na topics. Okay? So, but for the um, great schools or high-end na mga schools that time, 
ilustrados were accommodated by those schools. Ito na yung mga wealthy Filipinos. So, more negative effects were brought about by colonial education for the Filipinos. So, the Spanish authorities in the Philippines were mandated to educate the natives to teach them how to read and write, <coughs> excuse me, learn Spanish, and so on. Um, so, dito na inintroduce yung uh, culture of Spanish. And actually, there was this um, video I watched. Medyo, though it's 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 a fictional story, but most of the uh, events in that story were um, discussing truths about that time. Kung gano ka uh, unequal yung yung society in the past. So, girls were trained in such a way na uh, dapat one day magiging housewife ka. Dapat ready ka to be a housewife and dapat mag-asawa ka one day. And whenever they stand up for what they want, like uh, they don't want to, to marry, they don't want to um, be a housewife, whenever they... Uh, th- they they confess their feelings. Kinamumuhian sila. So, this is quite true in the past, during this Spanish period too. So, pag ang babae ay nag-stand up or hindi niya sinunod yung, yung parents niya to be married, have a family, or have a, have a husband, na discriminate ang mga babae. In college, going to college that time was um, dapat hindi hindi track ng babae yan. Dapat sa bahay ka lang, maging mabuti kang asawa, and so on. Okay? So, the public school system in the Philippines was born in 1863. Um, the, so, we have the, the law that implemented the training of both male and female teachers after the establishment of the Escuela Normal. By the way, just uh, um, ito, trivia. If you see schools that has normal, meaning that school is focusing on teaching, so teacher education, I think everyone knows Philippine Normal University, right? Opo, ma'am. Okay. Ayun po yung kauna ng school po ba dito sa Pilipinas? Ayun po ba yun, ma'am? Uh, yun in, in, mga teachers? Uh, well, that's the, the somehow the first school na maging center of excellence sa, sa teacher. So, ang expertise ng Philippine Normal University ay um, teacher education. To train an individual to become a teacher. Okay. So, anyway, um, in addition, teaching and controlling them was also in their hands. So, yung mga clergy or friars, sila ang nagko-control ng uh, Philippine education. And yun nga, mostly, they are focusing on Spanish culture. So, iniiba na nila yung kultura ng Pilipinas. But still, nandun pa rin yung thinking na women should be at home. Women, one day, will be a housewife. So, as the early part of the 17th century approached, there was already a system laid down for the secondary and tertiary education. But it was not directed only by Christian doctrines. So, they were uh, the... As the priests and monks worked together with the civil authorities, they also began to create a network of primary schools whereby both religious and secular subjects were taught. Were taught. Okay, so, medyo naiiba na rin yung educational system. That time, nagkakaroon na ng standards. Meron ng primary, primary 
um, intermediate, then high school, and college. Okay, so although a systematic and institu institutionalized kind of education was established, unfortunately, there was still inequality in attaining education. Okay, so people were also taught that social mobility was achieved through education, but sadly, uh, this manifested itself in social inequality and female subordination. So, ito na, usapang gender na tayo. Kasi, uh, aminin natin, talagang pag sinabing home economics, ay pambabae yan. Ay, ganito lang ginagawa nila, cooking, sewing. Well, in the past, that's true. But now, it's very different. Anyway, so, the higher priority for educational attainment was placed on men rather than on women. Okay, although the mestizos and wealthy people enjoyed the privileges of entering pres prestigious schools, there were women only vocational school. There were um, vocational schools only for women. However, most women were denied their rights to education due to the patriarchal belief that women should stay only at home. Okay, so, kaya dito na. Uh, na strengthen ang, ang home economics but home economics uh, yung, yung level ay cooking sewing, caregiving for, for kids so still may discrimination with regard to higher education the students graduated with a bachelor of arts degree so we have Colegio de San Ignacio, first college schools for the boys in Manila. And uh, nasundan pa ng iba't ibang uh, universities. Ayan, until we have the Ateneo de Manila or the Municipal. And so on. So compared with the boys, it took a little time to establish schools and colleges for girls. So, in 1589, Colegio de Santa Potenciana was open for girls. This was the first school and college for girls following the birth of the first school for women. Colegio de Santa Isabel opened in 1632. The religious congregations instituted Beaterio. The sole purpose of this was to provide education for orphaned girls who could not afford to educate themselves. So still, kahit na nabigyan ng, ng opportunity ang mga women, ang girls, to pursue a college degree, but look at the, the subjects taught. The lessons taught were basically about household tasks such as cooking, embroidery making, sewing, and other skills necessary for good housekeeping. So still... Doon pa rin tayo sa uh, housekeeping, sa household task. Doon pa rin nakafocus. Okay, question. Um, I know this is parang ah, si ma'am nag, nagpo-protesta, gender equality. <laughs> but I, I want to hear your opinion. Um, sa tingin nyo, that time, you can... Uh, pursue a degree na puro ganito lang. Uh, try natin si Abigail. Uh, Abigail, do you think you can manage to take a course na puro ganito lang or you want to to still exceed beyond this? Para po sa akin siguro ma'am, still, ano, mag-exceed pa po ng ibang, ano, ibang Uh, subjects, ma'am. Mm -mm. Kasi, kumbaga, eto kasi, ma'am, parang iisa lang po kasi yung skill na pinapalago niya. I mean, more on skill nga natin sa iisang pinipay economics lang. Hindi lumalawak yung kaalaman natin sa panlabas. Okay. Uh, sorry, nag-lag kanina, but I think 
uh, ang sagot ni Abigail is um, she wants to have more. So, hindi lang nakafocus dito. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, for Jessalyn, ibang question naman. Um, do you think na during this time, um, dapat pagbigyan yung mga yung mga women to take engineering courses or doctor to become a doctor and why ma'am ah, tingin ko po tingin ko po ano po kailangan pa rin po nilang pagbigyan yung mga babae hindi naman po porket babae ka is gan hanggang diyan ka na lang hanggang home economics ka na lang kailangan pa rin nating ipakita kung ano ba yung kakayahan nating mga babae parang hin- kasi po nakik- yun nga po yung nakikita natin kakaroon po ng gender equality so parang kailangan po nating ipakita na hindi lang tayo hanggang home economics lang kaya nating higitan kaya nating uh, pantayan yung mga ginagawa din ng mga lalaki po Okay, thank you. Uh, next, ako nakalimutan ko yung pangalan mo. Mikaela, tama ba? Opo, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Tatawagin sana. Jonathan, ay, iba nga pala. Okay. Um, it's fine. How about this? Ibang question naman. Sige pa, ma'am. Sa tingin mo, dapat bang i-offer ang home economics sa babae lang? Uh, for me po, ma'am, hindi. Kasi, um, skill po yun eh. Skills po yung pinag-uusapan natin. So, kung ang boys po is, halimbawa po, ma'am, di ba, masyado, that time po kasi, discrimination talaga, and inequal- inequality po ng mga babae at lalaki is talagang parang ang babae kasi sa household lang. So, ano pong matututunan nung, halimbawa po, yung mga ba- lalaki na, paglaki po nila or in the future po kasi yung sa home economics po is magagamit natin pang araw-araw hindi lang po sa trabaho hindi lang po sa ano so dapat po lahat matutunan yun which is ngayon po is ngayon ngayon po nangyayari yun kasi dati po kasi di ba may mga ayun nga po kasi na ano tayo eh nasasakop po tayo ng tawag dito ng mga ibang lahi. So, nagkakaroon po tayo ng mentality na iba. So, generation by generation po, nag-aano naman po siya eh, nagbabago, nagde-develop po hanggang sa ngayon po kasi mas na-realize po natin na lahat po dapat matutunan yung home economics. Ayun oh, po. Okay, thank you. Which is true. Ngayon, um, actually, may, may iba na nga ngayon na ang setup ng pamilya ay ang babae ang magtatrabaho. At ang lalaki ay nasa bahay. Si, uh, si husband na ang nagluluto, naglalaba, and so on. Okay, um, how about si Kaseline last? I'll think of a question. Um, do you think that home economics should be taught until college? And bakit? Hello po, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Sa akin po, yes po. Kailangan pa rin pong ituro yung so, home, ek- mm-hmm. home economics until college. Mm-hmm. Kasi po, um, hindi lang ito yung, hindi lang para mahasa yung skills natin, para na rin po uh, matutunan nila na um, kailangan malaman natin yung mga gantong gawain para sa future, uh, may mas magandang uh, trabahong para sa atin. Siyempre, kailangan ano ka, skilled ka eh pagdating mm-hmm. sa ibang bagay. Kaya dapat enhance mo din yung mga talents mo para uh, mas makatulong ka at ma-share mo din sa iba yung knowledge mo about them. Okay, thank you. Ayun po. Okay. Uh, ito, uh, maybe just uh, uh, share ko lang an, an anecdote. Um, well, I, I have a boyfriend na. Pero ito yung nakakatawa kasi sa kanya. Uh, my times... Ah, sorry, Kaseline. Okay lang pa-mute ng mic. Ayan. So, there are times when I visit him, uh, medyo makalat yung, yung bahay niya. Hindi marunong mag, magpalit ng, ng bumbilya. <laughs> so, yung mga basic skills na ganun, na masyadong focus sa, sa babae lang or hindi na ituturo hanggang college 
or hanggang kahit high school man lang na at talagang um, ipupukpok sa mga estudyante na ganito yung yung kailangan yung matutunan at home hindi lang puro science math english but you also need to learn the life skill so it's very critical kasi ngayon um i remember i i had a small conversation with his mother so yung mother niya medyo nagwo-worry kasi hindi siya marunong sa bahay and siya lang mag-isa currently sa sa lugar niya sa bahay niya so ang gulo-gulo ng paligid hindi marunong magluto maglaba and all though we cannot say din naman na ay mag-asawa na siya para may ano may may katulong syempre unfair din naman so i think boys and girls should really know how to do these stuff do these things and anyway ang ang home economics naman ngayon kahit um kuhanin na ng mga babae ngayon eh napakalawak ang dami na kasing branches or areas ng home economics na pwedeng i-explore so that's somehow one of the uh, major developments or improvements in home economics anyway let's proceed the next one so the decree of education in 1863 established the first ever educational system in the philippines it required the government to provide school institutions for boys and girls in every town given the situation the spanish school started accepting filipino students it was during this time that the intellectual filipinos emerged this also brought about the establishment of the normal schools so again normal schools these are schools that are focused on training someone to become a teacher Though, ito naman yung naging, um, I, I could say, magandang aspect. During those times, usually, babae rin ang, ang mga nagiging teachers naman. So, somehow, nag-improve na yung educational system. Okay, so, it gave opportunity to the Filipinos to attain the sound education. So, again, normal schools offered a three-year teacher-led education at the primary level. Now, going to the American period, like the Spaniards, they brought many cultural and traditional changes to the country. So, uh, there were strong influences that is seen in the lifestyle of Filipinos. Nandito na pumasok yung English. So, kung dati, Spanish Actually, it's pure Spanish nga lang eh. Ayaw nilang ituro yung Filipino. But during this time, English language naman. So, every child from age 7 was obliged to register at the nearest school. So, school supplies were given for free. Then, it the, the level of education was divided was divided into three. So, we have the elementary, secondary, and college. So, religion was not part of the school curriculum. If students excelled academically, they were given a chance to continue their studies and pursue their expertise in their chosen fields of professions or professions in the United States. So, nagkaroon rin dito ng mga scholars. And... Um, ayan, kung mapapansin nyo, mostly ng mga successful Filipino scholars are boys. Talagang sila yung nag, uh, nag-strive. I think it's, it's not just because, um, masipag sila or matalino lang. It's not just that. But, hindi kasi nabibigyan din ng opportunities ang mga babae to excel or to enter this. Kaya, mostly boys or men are recognized. So, meron tayong volunteer American soldiers and they were the first teachers of the Filipinos. 
Okay, I think we're gonna skip this. So, meron um, yung Thomasites. By the way, yung Thomasites, these are the teachers, yung mga volunteer American soldiers. So, Thomasites ang tawag sa kanila. And um, so, medyo marami rin yung nag-enroll uh, sa mga schools na to during the American period. Okay, and these were the universities established at time. So we have the Philippine Normal, Normal School, National University, St. Paul, and some Wanga Normal School, uh, University of the Philippines, and the University of Manila, Philippine Women's University, and FEU. So Medyo lumawak na rin yung um, mga, mga courses offered. And usually, ayan, well, the Philippine, uh, okay, most of the schools, these schools were offering vocational education. So when we say vocational education, mga two-year courses that focuses on, on skills. Yan, may agriculture, arts and trades, and so on. Question so far? You can... Wala po, ma'am. Wala, Wala po. Ma okay. So, as far as remote areas were concerned, mountain provinces and some parts of Mindanao, so there, there were schools built, and uh, uh, the, the focus is more on vocational and health practices. So, in accordance with the 1935 Constitution, there were uh, free education in public schools all over the country. So, nationalism was emphasized in schools, teaching the students about the deceased Filipino heroes. Okay, so ito na naman. <laughs> Cooking, farming, sewing, and some household activities together with vocational education were given importance. So, usually itong mga topics pag um, yung vocational education lang ang kukunin, mga two-year programs. But if you're gonna pursue um, medicine, law, engineering, uh, ibang level na yan, and usually uh, pang, pang lalaki pa din. Though dito nabibigyan pa rin, nabibigyan na ng opportunity, but um, I, I think there are uh, some girls who doesn't have the the courage to enter those industries or field of study. Why? Kasi kul kultura natin na, o oh, babae ka, dapat matuto kang magluto, marunong kang mag ganito, mag ganyan. Kasi mag-aasawa ka balang araw, ikaw ang gagawa niyan sa bahay. So, nandun pa rin yung, yung kultura na ang babae ay pambahay, housewife. So, discipline and proper manners were also not neglected. The Institute of Private Education aimed at observing private schools was established. Okay, so medyo rumami yung population sa private schools. And formal education was not only provided for youngsters. Even adult education was also present. So, ito na yung college. With the Americans out of the picture, the Japanese occupation started on 1941. And the changes in the education were this. So, to enrich the Filipino culture and stop patronizing Western countries, okay, actually, dito... Nag, dito tayo nagkaroon ng um, culture na we patronize foreign products. What have you observed? Pag, pag ang uh, isang item ay uh, ano to? from a foreign country or galing sa ibang bansa nga, ano Piniflex natin. <laughs> lagi tayong, lagi nating nihayabang. 
Mm-hmm. High quality po kasi mo. Lalo na yung mga Louis Vuitton, mga ganyan. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, dahil nga high quality and so on, but there are still products here na okay din naman ang quality. It's just that um, masyado tayong naging... I think there are some people. There are some people na pwede namang local brands but they still choose to um, spend uh, a big amount of money on a brand that is from another country. So, in terms of practicality, syempre hindi okay yon. But kung, kung anak ba tayo ni Henry C. or para tayong si Heart Evangelista na kayang-kaya bumili ng mga ganong brands, why not? But um, there are just some people who has mindset na um, I'll buy this, I'll buy all that. But in terms of finances, eh, hindi na kaya. So, medyo dito nag-start yung um, culture na we, we always patronize Western products. So, next... To recognize that the Philippines is part of the greater East Asia Co. prosperity sphere so that the Philippines and Japanese could have good relations. To boost the morality of the Filipinos and instill cautiousness of materialism. To forget and to stop English language learning. And instead, learn and adopt Nipongo or Nihongo. So since Japanese period to, and if, if you have noticed, talagang... Uh, tong mga mananakop they are always instilling or injecting their language in our culture to proliferate primary and vocational education and to foster love for work so since japanese to eh, they uh, they they give high importance in education uh, in, in work Okay, so as soon as the Commission of Education, Health and Public Welfare was established, opening of schools were followed in June 1942. Then, during their time, the teaching of Tagalog, Philippine history, and character education were observed. Passion for work and dignity of labor labor was stressed. So since ito nga ay Japanese period, di ba, I, I'm not sure if you have observed, but the culture of Japanese is um, kailangan we, we work hard and double that effort in working. Okay, so aside from teaching Nipongo and using entirely pro-Japanese books and material at all levels of education. The Japanese also showed movies and organized cultural productions. Performers such as singers and dancers were brought to the Philippines together with painters, singers, and scholars so that the Filipinos would acquire inspiration, love, and the cooperation among them. Filipinos were keen and did not just blindly believe the excessive promises of the Japanese. Okay, so... Anong mapapansin nyo dito? I think dito nag, nagsimula ang, di ba meron tayong tinatawag in the past, mga Japayuki. Have you heard of that term? Probably from your parents. Like ko naririnig yun sa magulang ko eh. Opo ma'am, yung mga babae Opa. pong nasa Japan, nag, nag, ano po, nagbebenta ng kanilang puri. <laughs> Ganun daw po yung mga trabaho. Okay, so so sa pagkaka-describe nila ay eh, nagbebenta ng ng puri. Okay. Um Meron eh, ano ban ano ban tawag doon? Um yung mga Japanese na uh, I think this is this is a, a correct term. Well, matatanda na naman kayo, so hindi na to bago. Japanese prostitute do iba to um, uh, i forgot the term yung mga naka kimono mga geisha yan geisha do ito medyo matagal na 
Uh, ang mga gay siya kasi para silang mga mga Japanese prostitute na um, talagang properly groomed. Mga magaganda. Yung mga mapuputi ang mukha tapos red yung lipstick. So, in the past, ito yung uh, parang prostitute nila. But this one, yung mga Filipinos, they, they go to Japan usually as singers, as dancers, uh, more of in, in the arts. And Japanese somehow has a culture of enjoying these kinds of activities. Kasi nga lagi silang stress sa trabaho. So, mahilig silang pumunta sa bar, mag karaoke, uh, mag-unwind. Kaya, nagkaroon ng maraming avenue to to put up bars. Um, yun nga, karaoke, uh, ka, ano yun? Ka, KTV. Then, Filipinos can go there to perform. Um, sadly, siguro yung iba <laughs> sa sobrang uh, kailangan ng, ng pera. So, they also go in the industry of, of prostitute. And actually, until now, I read a documentary na hindi, fil- hindi lang Filipinos, mga high school students sa Japan. So, they are, they are doing that. And it's fine. Pag pumunta ka sa isang street nung sa, sa Japan, punong-puno ng mga young, mga high school students na unfortunately, they are doing prostitution. Ma'am, okay. sa yeah. ano po? So, dito, dito din po sa Philippines, meron pong parang mga ano po, Japanese na ganun po. Doon po sa may, ano yun eh, documentary din po na panood ko sa may malate, ma'am. Ah, doon okay. Po, ma'am. May mga la- lounge po doon na nakaano sila. Mm-mm. Nakapunta na ba kayo doon? I mean, kahit sa, sa street na yon Opo, ma'am, kasi malapit po yung sa Robinson. <laughs> doon po oh. sa, ano, sa malate po. Mm-mm. O si Casey oh, si K- mm. oh, si Lynn, para may sasabihin. <laughs> <laughs> hindi po mo sasabihin ko po sana hindi pa po ako nakadaan sa gano'n. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> dadaan kita. <laughs> so, uh, since ako, ako din kasi eh, eh, laking Manila since nag-college ako doon. So, pag dumadaan kami sa street na yon kahit naka-jeep lang, yung mahabang street na maraming pasikot-sikot, magkakatabi yun na, na clubs, bar, mga lounge nga. Tapos, makikita mo, ang actually, ang gaganda ng mga babae. Uh, talag, mapupute, makinis. Yun nga lang, um, yun yung work nila. Tapos, maraming mga foreigners doon. May... Actually, not just Japanese, pati Korean, Chinese, American, pati mga, uh, I'm not sure if it's Nigerian, basta mga, mga black people. So, sobrang dami doon. Okay, anyway, so going back, so among the three colonizers of the, of the country, the Americans dominate. With English as the medium of instruction, the Philippine education is a prototype of the American system, which is true. Um, actually, sa, sa America, nagsimula din yung mga women fighting for their rights. Women um, competing with men in the different fields. So, for instance, see. Maria Montessori, one of the uh, major contributors in the education field. Sa galing niya, nag-engineering siya, nag-doktor, though in the end, naging teacher siya kasi sobrang ganda ng um, teaching strategy na inintroduce niya. So, y- yung mga ganong um, stories, histories, of women rising, fighting for their rights, usually sa, sa American yan. Kaya, ngayon, uh, I, I think I can say na, kaya may ganun tayong culture na ang mga babae ngayon ayaw patalo. Tama ba? Meron na tayong pride. Meron na tayong lakas ng loob. 
Okay, so schools are categorized into public or private. The preparatory primary level consists of nurseries, kindergartens, and preparatory schools offered in most private schools. Moving on to six years of primary education, followed by four years of secondary education and college. Meaning the general pattern of formal education has four stages. And, hindi nabanggit dito, meron na rin tayong senior high school. Because the my reference here was uh, published, this this study was published um 2012. Kaya hindi pa nasama si K-12. So, I think no need to uh, further discuss this, but in summary, um, now, because there are technological advances during the Industrial Revolution, and daming naging major discoveries in terms of science and technology. So, kung noon na focus yung home economics, Specifically, cooking, house management. Ngayon naman, natabunan na siya. At napalitan na ng mga ganitong subjects like engineering, business, mathematics, natural and social sciences. So, now medyo na um, hindi na napapahalagahan yung home economics. But, if we're gonna look into these strands, ma, ma, may relation pa rin sa TLE or sa home economics. And yun nga, since with the advancement of technology and science, lumawak din yung sakop ng home economics. Nandiyan na yung food nutrition, food preservation, budgeting, so, finance, nasa sakop na din ng, ng home economics. Um, business, entrepreneurial skills. Why? Kasi bes- besides cooking, sewing, dressmaking, meron na rin tayong cosmetology. Meron tayong, um, yun nga, baking. So, different avenues wherein you can use those skills to put up your own business. So, lumawak din naman yung home economics at um, I can say medyo na na relate yung mga different areas sa different strands na to or areas. Okay, so somehow that's uh, a bit of a history of the education in the Philippines and as you have observed, um, noon pa man, meron ng uh, home economics. It was given so much importance because we perceive, or the, the people in the past perceive that, ah, sorry, mababa yung tisyo ko. People in the past uh, perceive that women should be uh, trained how to be housewives. Do you agree with that? na ang women ay for housewives lang. Gusto niyo ba ng ganun? Ano pa, ma'am? Ayan. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so, ang question ko ay, do you want to be trained to become a housewife? So, si Abigail, Jessalyn, Kaiselyn, no, ikaw. Yes ka ba, uh, Mikaela? Hindi pa, ma'am. Okay, hindi. So, uh, I remember nung, nung first meeting natin when I asked you about uh, how do you see yourself. Mga mat- matataas ang, ang pangarap nating mga babae. And ngayon, actually, nung tinanong ko to sa mga students ko, what, how do you see yourself 10 years from now? Um, wala akong narinig na gusto kong maging housewife. Or gusto kong nasa bahay lang. Hinihintay ko yung asawa ko. <laughs> Wala nang ganon. Ang, ang mga dreams niyo ay gusto ko maging ganitong teacher. Gusto ko uh, magkaroon ng sariling restaurant. Gusto ko maging ganito. So, talagang nag, nag-iba na yung, um, yung, yung pattern ng, ng uh, home education or home arts. But... Di naman natin sinasabi na uh, since 
most women or not just women but boys wants to be in this industry ay dapat um, hindi na isama yung home arts or home economics sa curriculum. Still, dapat tinuturo pa din yung, yung ganitong subject because it teaches us life skills, survival skills. Ito nga is yung, yung mga students ko sa uh, high school. So, since I'm also teaching uh, food technology, ni paghawak ng knife, hindi marunong. So, kung ikaw, eh, hindi ka marunong ma- humawak ng kutsilyo, let's say, iaabot mo yun sa isang tao, baka masaksak mo pa yung tao accidentally. Or, um, tulad nitong pandemic, hindi pwedeng lumabas. Hindi pwedeng uh, kumain konsansan. Actually, even uh, magpa-deliver ng food ay hindi na rin safe. Diba? Kasi pwedeng yung nagde-deliver ng food ay carrier. So, the the safe, safest way is for you to cook at home. Eh, what if you don't know how to cook? So, paano na yan? Uh, ma- magugu- ma- parang mamamatay na lang sa gutom. <laughs> or worse, eh, baka pag puro pa-deliver ng foods, you're not getting the the right nutrition. And worst case, makakuha pa ng, ng virus. So, um, from from these from home economics dito natin matututunan yung um, mga ganitong life skills and it's very important ngayon lang siguro na appreciate ng iba yung mga uh, tinuturo sa home economics because I saw I saw some people yung during the ECQ they were posting about oh uh, marunong ka na ba magluto? O marunong ka na ba mag, maglinis, maglaba, and so on. So, from from that, again, we are teaching here life skills. And eventually, these life skills, um, we can put it into practice that is profitable. And it's not just for for women, it's also for men. So, same thing. Yung kung dati, ang engineering, law, business, uh, medicine ay for boys, pang girls na din siya. And ayun nga, same thing with home economics. Okay? So, since we're done with the history and introduction of home economics, we're gonna continue the next activity. Sorry, I, I wasn't able to prepare the excuse me, the next topic. So, we're gonna meet again on Thursday. Uh, Thursday na tayo mag-meet to uh, discuss the next topic. Do you have questions before we end? Wala po. Wala na mag Wala po so, <laughs> okay. Okay. So if none, um magpo- ipo-post ko na lang to sa uh, group natin pati yung video kasi ni record ko. So kung gusto niyo makita somehow yung dinidis yung marinig yung dinidiscuss ko ulit, you can uh, replay it sa sa Google Classroom. Ay mamay tanong pa ako. Yes. Magpo-post na po kayo ng another activity namin, ma'am? Hindi pa. Wala pang activity. Ay, hindi pa pa. Ah, sige po. Thank you po. Okay. So, kung wala ng question, again, see you on Thursday. Uh, ingat lahat. And see you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye po. Thank you. Bye-bye po.